Hello everyone and welcome to the Little Blue Fly. In today's video I will be decorating my stone fireplace mantle. Um, it, it will very much be um, from my European heritage. So it's going to um, have a very strong European influence. But before I get started I just want to touch on a couple things. Um, one, the I know some of you have been messaging me saying, you know, am I giving away a free gift? Unless I announce that I'm giving it away on my video, I do apologize. Those scammer spammers are just working overtime this season. Um, just, I would just go ahead and, and delete it. And again, my apologies that you're even having to go through such thing. And number two, I'm sorry I did not get the three videos out this week, but we decided to celebrate our daughter Riley's birthday early. It is next week, but she wanted to celebrate it early. So I do apologize for that, but I will be back with three videos next week. So that being said, let's begin, shall we? Okay, so here is our wonderful stone mantle at the cottage with our television right up on it, <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. So down below, well, I'll speak about this more in a minute, um, what we have going on down here, but the fireplace, if you go to the earlier videos you will see that it was a different color it used to be white and i really stripped things um real good it, it, it took i believe it was a couple weeks if i'm remembering right and i had to remove all of the german schmear off the stone and get it back to its natural state which we absolutely love and then down below the fireplace, we were just about ready to give up. I know I've mentioned this before, but I have quite a few new subscribers. So we placed the grate up on the bricks and the airflow, now it's great and the smoke goes right out. But we will be making some changes on the inside just so that, you know, it looks a little bit nicer. But what I'm searching for, um, they're kind of hard to come by, so we'll see. That's to be continued. Okay. Now, the television screen up at top. I, I am really fine with this now. I am. We just have this one room here. No family room, just this one small living room. And we were um, going to try to do things a little bit differently, but it just didn't work out that way. So I just have this little section of the mantle that I can use. The TV could have went to the side, but then we would have had to twist and it just, it would have been awkward. So here it sits and we're perfectly fine with that. And we've just been enjoying many Christmas movies and playing video games. We were going to have a projector come down from the ceiling, but the joists did not allow that. We thought they were going the other direction and nope. So here we have it. TV stays here and we'll flat screen and we will decide what we are going to put around it, if anything. But right now we are going to decorate on top of this stone beauty. You know, a lot of times, um, just because I was younger, you know, and our backyard was, you know, basically Yosemite National Park or, you know, other state parks. So we were always out in the stone creeks and the, and the stone bottom rivers. And so it's almost like this whole mantle was made for me. So a lot of times I'll just come up here and rub my hands and fingertips across it and, um, just gives me that good feeling. Okay, so we are going to make the most out of this space, of course. 
because that's what I love to do. I love to layer items. And we are going to start with this pot. Look, there's, look, there's tinsel on it. <laughs> we are going to start with this pine garland. Garlands have just, um, they've really stepped it up. And so many of my garlands are now changing inside the house because we have all these beautiful, realistic looking um, pines that are taking place here for our homes. Now I love using real ones as well, but you know, even especially over the fireplace that we will be using, I don't think it would be too wise to use the real because it does catch flames quite quickly. Well, it can. And this garland came from a company called Regency. And here we have Natural Touch Norfolk Pine Garland. Just in case any of you are interested in trying to find it out there. I try my best to link items in my description box. Next, I will be placing in some of these eucalyptus sprays. Now in California, these just grow in abundance everywhere. And yes, I would have my husband drive me out to the country because again, they are everywhere. I would go out there with my pruning shears and a couple of garbage bags and I would fill them up and make the most gorgeous eucalyptus garlands for the holidays. But since I don't have that here, I'm going to be using these faux stems. I actually like the way they look. They, they have the silver dollar um, eucalyptus shape to them. California, we have the sil silver dollar ones as well. Um, and then also the long... Um, I don't know the name of it, uh, eucalyptus leaves. So again, on all the stems or even garlands that I work with, I like to pull back the branches so I can get more um, surface coverage. And I'm just tucking it and then, of course, let them mingle. So work them through each other to give more of a natural look. And I'm just going to do the same thing going all the way down. And I need to try to cover... Um, that electrical plate. Eventually, we're going to paint it the same color as the stone so it doesn't um, stand out so much. There's always so much to do, right? So much to do. But I choose to decorate over all of that for right now. <laughs> but big changes are taking place. Okay, so I have all of the eucalyptus in now. I make sure you know, it's going in all different directions. I wanted to place some down over the stone. Okay, now to add in some other items. As you can see at the bottom, I placed a couple of my um, vintage books. I think it's a set of nine. And many of you that have been following for some time know that I was looking for Charles Dickens books because I love his stories, love his movies. And I found these gorgeous green, olive green with um, gold detailing. Now 
So I placed two at the other end and just twisted the top just to add, you know, a little bit more interest and depth to this display. Now I will be working um, up the wall as well. I just recently purchased two of these. Um, they're just the sweetest, the blue and white with the stone wash up at the top. Goes perfect with the mantle. They're probably going to stay up year long. They will just change up as I go through the seasons. Um, these were purchased from Maryfield Garden. And down at the bottom, it does say Raz Imports. And look, we have a serial number, 4200804. Maybe look that up, something might come up. If I find something, I will post it in my description box. But these are just the sweetest orb vessels. I absolutely adore these. And I just placed it right on top of the books. And now we are going to add these. I mean, I'm serious about going to market. I'm really, really serious about this. Um, these are Rose Hips by Winward. They make very, very much so higher um, quality floral. And here are some numbers on the back for you. Now you get what you pay for. These are a little bit more expensive. But when we buy something faux, we want for it to last a while, right? And I will be placing one to the left, one to the right, and then I will place in a third one right up front and I could have stopped right there and with just the three and it looks sweet you know after you work your leaves a little bit but I wanted to move up a little bit I wanted a little bit more height so I just went ahead and decided to place another right up at top and then again you just work because all of these are on wire you just um, work them to the desired shape you're looking for. And the green goes perfectly with the blue and white. I have a couple pine cones up there. And I went ahead and shaped them a little bit just to give them sort of like a, a dwarf, um, almost like a Christmas tree shape. So I removed the pine cones because I had to add in a couple of books up front. I decided to do this to help hide the plate and just make things a little bit more interesting on top of the mantle. And now for the height, I will be using these very tall and slender buffet lamps. They have the burlap drum shade. I did purchase these from Maryfield Garden. Um, again, if I have the time, I will try to find them and link them. I decided to keep on um, the ribbon that has been on there. You know, another thing. When we decorate for Christmas, we don't necessarily have to always stay with all those Christmas colors, right? We can go more plum or mauve or bring in the berries. Now these are real floral that was purchased and here is the silk. We have oranges, orange tones, and then your warmer red burgundy tone. And then, of course, the blueberries. Always have to add in the blueberries. But we can get very creative with the colors that we use for Christmas. If it speaks Christmas to our hearts, use it, right? 
So I'm just going to share with you how I put this together. There's quite a bit of um, wires going on back here, so this might get a little tricky. This is a very um, fragile dry floral to work with. And again, I just make sure that all of my greenery starts mingling with um, the florals I'm adding in for that natural look. Now, when you're making these as well, you can also, um, you can cut down the stem, but I don't want to do that just in case I decide to use these in a tall vessel. I like to save my stem if I feel like I'm going to possibly use them that way. Now the faux one, I just placed it um, just down a little bit lower and right up front. So we have the dark, rich color in the back and then the lighter tones up front because the dark colors are really gonna going to pull through the arrangement sort of like these berries they're they're very dark so I place them in the back and I just sort of weave them through and let them cuddle around the florals so the dark colors in the back and work them up front to the lighter colors And then all the greenery, make sure everything's weaved through really good. And then you have the perfect arrangement. I don't remember. Oh, no, those berries, those were purchased in California. Now, I do have quite a few berries um, at my um, Amazon storefront. Uh, the link is in my description box. And one just broke off. See, they're just so fragile. But that's okay. We'll just place it right back in there. And here we have the left side and then the right side. They look the same, but also a little bit different. They have their own, um, their own individual characteristics to them. And that's just the way I wanted it. So when going for the European look and feel, definitely bring in all your florals, your pine cones, your greenery. So I placed one to the left and to the right. Have the old world look also going on with the books. And then the blue and white. And more rose hip berries. And then there's this wonderful channel I heard about called the Little Blue Fly. I heard that she loves to go on all these different magical adventures. So if you haven't taken the time to subscribe or go look at her channel, the Little Blue Fly, please do so today. She always loves getting new subscribers. Okay, here we have some figs. I purchased these from, I'm thinking, Pottery Barn. This not the I was looking at the bottom of the bag to look at the sticker, but um, it was in a different bag. And I love these figs. Figs are very um, just very festive um, throughout the holidays. So much so that I'm going to be decorating with some today and in next video as well. 
So I remember I shared with you all that I didn't put a video up because I came across something, right? Here's one of my vintage clocks. Um, I came across an item at Home Goods, and I had to have a match with it. So that took me away from making a video. You're going to find out in next video exactly what it was. And it's gorgeous, or they are gorgeous. And here's some more very ornate gold clocks from West Germany. I love these little round clocks from West Germany. I just place them a couple on top of the books and you know, and then I like to stand back and I was like, hmm, no. So I decided to add in, this was recently thrifted, sweet, sweet aged book. Oh my go goodness, I just love this little fella here. Look at the date, 1884. This little book demands attention. Perfectly aged. So I will always decorate with, with this little piece using care. So I decided to place a clock on top of the book and I put the other one down below. Now I like this. So again, whenever I'm decorating, I'll put it together and then I always stand back. Sometimes I leave the room and I walk in and see if it grabs my attention. Okay, these sweet gold birds came from the at-home store. Perfect for Christmas decorating, having that aged gold color. So I placed the two little sweet birds to the right. And then mother, she's not too far away. She is over to the left, making sure that the children are behaving. Birds are always wonderful to work with during um, any season of decorating. Now we're going to, I'm going to add a little bit here down at the bottom to bring in some more of that European feel. I will be going along the bottom of the mantle. But right here, eventually, I'm going to have a mirror. I'm looking for a very nice um, paneled vintage mirror. Or it can be new too, but I prefer vintage. Now these um, weaved baskets I purchased from Hobby Lobby and they definitely have that European look and feel to them. Actually, during fall, I had them up in my fall tree. So I placed all five of them up. I have a mixture of moss inside the baskets. I placed one large one in the center. And then the two smaller ones are to the sides. I used um, wire for the center and the outside ones and just had them go underneath the books and then I have them fastened to something behind the books to hold them in place. But I also used some of these, um, I did use some of these command hooks. The two pound ones because I wanted to make sure they didn't, sometimes they pop off. And I didn't want that to happen because I'm going to be decorating in these baskets. Loving the look. Now, one can also just use very large baskets as well, but this being stone, and you know, I'm really not going to fasten something inside my stone that's just too invasive. So that's why we are working with smaller baskets today and this wonderful holly that I purchased from the flower gallery.
Now what I did is just clipped off a couple pieces, a couple branches um, from just the big cluster of holly and placed a couple in the baskets. And this so just, these say Christmas all over them. Cinnamon sticks, they smell wonderful, look wonderful, and just simple string that you can purchase anywhere in the gift wrapping section. Just tied it around the cinnamon sticks. And I placed them in each basket. Now to add in some sugared fruit. Um, these were purchased, I believe these came from Hobby Lobby in a box a couple years ago. But one could actually even use real fruit, but I just didn't want to fuss with it. Um, maybe I'll add in real fruit like Christmas Eve or Christmas Eve Eve and the children can take them out and peel them. Um, I love getting the oranges that still have the leaves to them. It's very festive. But for now, we will keep the sugared faux fruit inside. And then I will be adding one more thing to these baskets. And when we go in for the closer look, you will see exactly what they are. So if you have a moment, what it is, if you have a moment, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe if you have not. And here's the ribbon. It's olive green and it was purchased from Hobby Lobby. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And thank you for coming to visit me.